Welcome to Serial, the podcast for the morning. I'm your host, Haley, and I'm joined today with my co-hosts, Cole and Aaron. Hi, I'm Cole. What up? I'm Aaron. And this is the top movies you should watch during the quarantine. Today, we're joined with our special guest, self-proclaimed movie expert, Rob Kern. Oh, okay. Um, yes, there, right off the bat, there's an error. Uh, I am not a self-proclaimed uh, film expert in any capacity. Oh, um I did, however, respond to an email that asked me to share some thoughts on this podcast. So uh, that's my only qualification. So lower everybody should just lower their expectations now. All right. So everybody's pretty bored during this quarantine, and we just wanted to get some top-notch information on what we should do to keep ourselves busy. And Mr. Kern, we have come to you. So would you like to take it away with your top five movies for the quarantine? Absolutely. Um, First of all, thank you very much for having me on this podcast. It's an honor uh, to work with you people and to share some of my insights. Um, I really, really enjoy film as a medium. Um, usually around the Oscars, I, I like to take the, the list of nominees for some of the major categories and try to work my way through them um, because it's usually, it's usually an opportunity that really points us in the right direction to some really, really good film. Um, I think that narrowing down five suggested films uh, is a difficult task or, or five really, really good films is a difficult task without compartmentalizing them in some capacity. So um, after I, I, I agreed to do this and, and thought about it a little bit, I wanted to kind of put together some thoughts and kind of categorize this around five of my favorite Adam Driver films. Um, so that's that's my plan to share that with you guys today. All right, so before we start, I would just like to ask, why Adam Driver? Well, I think, I mean, Adam Driver, I think, is a very, very good actor. Um, I really appreciate his backstory, um, having joined the Marines and then getting into acting a little bit later. Um, I think he's had some phenomenal uh, roles as of late. And uh, I think that he's, there's a few actors and actresses that... Um, it, it really, if they're in the film, I usually am a little bit more intrigued because they're not the type that would take, uh, just take a role to take a role. And I feel like, I feel like Driver brings an artistic element and I think he expresses quite a bit of range in his acting as, as evidenced by the five uh, films that I want to talk about today. All right. Well, would you like to get started with the first Adam Driver movie? Sure, sure. So first to start with, um, and this is kind of a, we're going to take three films and, and merge them into one. Uh, and that would be Star Wars episodes seven, eight, and nine. Um, I don't think Star Wars are usually known for superior acting per se, but they are, um, they are cultural, culturally iconic films, um, dating back from episode four, which came out in 1977. Uh, and then episode five in 1980, episode six in 1983, before they came back, they came out with the prequels uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, finally rounding out the story arc uh, over the last five years were episodes seven, eight, and nine. Um, I think Adam Driver's role as Kylo Ren, not only, it, it, it's not as much, in my opinion, the role per se, as it is the inclusion of him in one of the most um, popular, culturally iconic uh, film series in Star Wars. So I think I think if you want to go down the Adam Driver path and you want to take a look at range, um, I think you absolutely have to include episodes seven, eight, and nine of the Star Wars series into into that into that character study for sure. I saw episode seven and eight, but I haven't seen episode nine. So did you see episode nine? Yes, I did. I saw them all. All right. So I know like in episode nine, he like changes from the dark side to the light side to like helping. Does, is that like, does he do that in like a good way? Like changing sides, like in character portrayal? Yeah, I think, I think it's just for, for me really nine was, was there's definitely development from, from seven, eight, nine through his character for sure. Um, and, and finding out his origins and who his parents are early on in seven um 
you know, it it makes sense that he that he has the transformation that he has in nine. His character has the transformation that he has in nine for sure. Um, and it was just a nice way to kind of finish out the. I mean, really think about it, right? It's two thousand. I think nine came out in two thousand nineteen, and you know, I mean, that's a pretty long running story arc, nineteen seventy seven to two thousand nineteen. So um, it was definitely definitely nice to a good way for it to end in my opinion i don't know it was kind of a neat it, it just kind of a neat thing the way it worked out with i remember mr larrabee um he texted me after the film after he saw the film and he said that the first thing he did was he, he called his mom and thanked her for taking him to the first one in 1977 at the theater because it was just i mean how many story arcs how many stories span that amount of actual time right you know what I mean? That's that's a long. I mean, that's over forty years. People were crying in the theater, which is which is interesting. But I think there was some serious cultural significance. So as far as as far as like the choices that were made uh, in the writing and everything like that, I I really it, it really could have been anything. Star Wars could put anything out, and I'll I'll go watch it because I I, I like it. But um, I just think it was interesting to to see it come to an end more nostalgic than anything for me. But it's I think it's pretty cool that that driver was I mean, you go back to the, you know, I mean Harrison Ford, uh Carrie Fisher, I mean that's such an interesting franchise mm -hmm. and for Driver to be a part of it I think is is pretty cool. It's interesting you say that. I haven't really watched many of the Star Wars movies. So let's move on to the next one. Sure. Um the next one now the the audience here is probably I think your target demographic here is going to be high school students. So this one this one might not resonate much with them, but I just thought it was a really good I think I think he did a really good job with this role. Um and it got some critical acclaim. Marriage story, uh, where he co-stars with Scarlett Johansson. Um he is a I believe he's a, a producer. Uh, he and his he and his wife are producers slash playwrights. Um and they navigate a divorce throughout the course of the film. They have a child. Um, and it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a really good film that kind of chronicles the, the demise of this relationship. Um, and a little bit sad for sure, because there's, there's a kid involved. But um, again, you know, to move from the Star Wars trilogy to to that type of a role, I think really displays his range. And it was definitely a good movie. Um, not a warm Disney feel good ending by any stretch, but um, definitely a good film. And, and again, really expressing uh, his range as an actor for sure. I've personally seen Marriage Story and I was wondering which role do you think challenged him more? Because Star Wars is world known, everybody's seen it. So that's you are held to a high standard and something like that. But the emotional toll in Marriage Story, how does that play into his acting that's a great question i don't know i don't know i think i think you're i think you're right to point out that the pressure of being a lead in a star wars film has to be significant um especially with some of the criticism that uh the guy that the kid that played anakin in the in the one two and three uh received so um i think he's at a different point in his career though when it comes to that so i i don't I don't know. I don't know. That's a really good question. I I, would, I don't know that I'm actually able to answer that one as far as what what would be more difficult. I think I think certainly you're you're, you're right to say that Star Wars probably was a lot more uh, a lot more pressure filled. But I think that maybe the the content I would I would think the content of Marriage Story might be more emotionally um, enriching or grappling uh, for him for anybody really. I personally don't know anything about the movie so. I mean, it's just super sad. It really it just is. It gets worse and worse. It really <laughs> is. But they do it gracefully. You know what I mean? It's 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 definitely sad, but like I like the ending. It's a graceful ending. Um unfortunately, you know, it it doesn't have that that like Disney they get back together in the end type romantic comedy feel. By any mm -hmm. stretch, it's extremely realistic, but um you know, I think there's I think you know, I'm watching I watch Ozark with Jason Bateman. And one of the things I love about Jason Bateman is he can do, you know, Arrested Development, which is just this extremely outlandish, um, extreme comedy with all these huge characters and how um, uh, extraordinary everybody is. And then he goes from, be from being that to being a completely detached, isolated, uh, numb, feelingless character in Ozark. And I think that that range really is interesting. I, I like when actors can, can get, you know, not, it's not, he's not typecast. In other words, he, he can do a lot of different things. 
Marriage Story sounded like a great movie to watch. I should definitely watch it sometime. Although it was sad, I kind of want to watch it now. That's interesting, Aaron. I don't believe you for a second. Um, <laughs> but we'll move on. Um, <laughs> we'll move on. The next one uh, is... Let's see. I'll go. We've got two political ones and then a more artistic one. We'll end with the artistic one. So um, Black Klansman was absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is a Spike Lee film. Spike Lee's films are notoriously good um, and politically charged. This certainly was that. Essentially, the premise of Black Klansman, for those of you that are not uh, familiar, is, and I believe it's, it's based on, on real events, uh, in the 1970s, um, the Colorado Springs Police Department hired their first African-American detective, and he is able to infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan via telephone. He, I believe, answers a personal ad and via phone begins initiating a series of conversations with the Grand Wizard of the KKK, David Duke. And... In order for him, he gets the information by posing as a white, uh, a white male interested in joining the Klan, even though he's an undercover detective. And then when anything is acted upon, Adam Driver's character, who is also a detective at the Colorado Springs Police Department, has to do, has to actually go to the places and do the things and pose as the character that the undercover detective has created on the telephone. Um, so really, really interesting take on, just an interesting look at, at race relations in the 1970s in Colorado Springs and, and nationally in general. Um, and the Ku Klux Klan, phenomenal, really, really phenomenal film. Um, maybe in this in this group that I'm sharing with you today, um, if I were if I if I were to have to rank the films, I think that might be at the top because it was just really good. And Spike Lee's phenomenal uh, with his stuff. And if you are if that sounds interesting in any capacity, I, I certainly recommend it. And Driver um, Driver really is kind of a, a supporting actor in this one, um, and just does a great job. And 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 their the, his characters. Uh, relationship with the other character uh, really evolves and and grows and it's just really an, an eye-opening piece for sure yeah i don't I know if anybody the, had, um, you saw it cole i no, i saw the commercials for it when it first yeah. came out and like once i saw the commercials i had a i googled it to see if it was a real thing and it was and the plot seemed very interesting it is that. it's so good like the conversations that david duke has with with the uh with the African American detective, uh, is and, and there's there is one of the things about this film that I absolutely love is there is humor and comedy within the delivery of the dialogue, and in a way that it's hard to explain, but it's just phenomenal. the The delivery of the dialogue is in and of itself entertaining and humorous, and then it isn't until the very very end. There's an extremely um, disturbing politically po po political um, element to the film that really just expresses some viewpoints and and is really really uh, heart wrenching and 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 really uh, eye opening and it's phenomenal. I, I highly recommend this film. I think Driver's Driver's role is really Driver's role is is absolutely secondary to the whole piece. The 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 film itself just just really speaks its own volumes it looks like adam driver's really driving it home <laughs> oh, God. that's a great point aaron he really is okay film number four of five um this was available i think i streamed this on amazon prime um and it's called the reports okay um and this film is about and i could be i could be uh, uh, muddying some of the details here but essentially after the 9 11 terror attacks um, there was a series of uh, detainments of possible suspects and people that were suspected of being terrorists, um, and some questionable methods were used in in questioning those detainees. Um, so Adam Driver is tasked with creating a report that uh, illustrates 
the methods that were used to interrogate these suspected terrorists. Um, and interestingly, there was a lot of, throughout the film, some research comes out that um, torture is not the best way to get the truth out of detainees. Um, and that was something that, that the CIA had come to years prior. Um, they, they had learned that uh, building rapport and trust was the best way to get the truth out of people and um, detainees. And what they found was that torture very rarely got any new information and truthful information out of detainees. They either shared things that, detain, uh, that the uh, CIA already knew or they lied to just have things come to an end. Um, and this is a film that basically chronicles the story of how this 8,000, I think it was 8,000 page report was created. Um, and it took, I think over the, I took, I think it took the course of maybe five years to come up with. Um, and there was a lot of censoring. There was a lot of issues. There were a lot of issues with it. They, uh, he had threatened at one point to share it with the times so that, or the, or the Washington post so that it would get out there. The right version of the report would get out there and it wouldn't be censored. Um, it's really, uh, his character is extremely driven, extremely focused and he is 100% business on this task. And um, I think it really displays um, just, again, back to his range. I think it's really interesting that he could be as detached as he was in this role. Um, and it's a really, it's about a two hour film. It's a pretty slow first hour. Um, but after that, it really, really gets interesting. Um, so if you can get through that, and if you're interested in any of that political type stuff at all, uh, definitely a film worth watching for sure. So you mentioned two political movies, and I believe before you mentioned that your last one was a little more artistic. Did you want to share some thoughts on that? Um, all right. So the last film that I want to share is called Patterson, and it takes place in Patterson, New Jersey. Um, Adam Driver's character in this film is a bus driver for the city. He's married. He and his wife don't have any children, and his wife is extremely, I don't want to say eccentric, but she is um, very much willing to, to consistently try new things and new avenues for expression and new mediums. Um, at one point, she wants to be an interior designer. Another point, I think she wants to be a painter. Another point during the film, she wants to, to learn how to play the guitar. She is looking for this artistic, uh, She's looking for a consistent means of expressing herself artistically while Adam Driver each day, uh, he, he's very, very routine. That His character, very, very routine, very by the book, goes to, goes to work, gets up at the same time every day, goes to work, drives the same bus route, takes the dog for a walk at the same time, stops at the same place for a drink at the same time each night, and he writes poems. And it's just a really interesting juxtaposition between his wife who is constantly looking for something um, she's the opposite of the disciplined structured scheduled character that her husband is um and it's one of those um the way the best way to describe it is really like a slice of life film it's it's very artistic um it's very well done and it's not there's no explosions or exciting climaxes or anything like that it's completely just a slice of life uh pretty slow paced film but um again you know to go from black Klansman to patterson is just an interesting um alteration in roles for sure uh, but really really a good film so being in quarantine which one of these movies do you think would have the most impact on say a high school student while they're stuck in their house and looking for something to relate to or kind of just, you know, distract themselves from what's going on? Well, I don't want to make any suggestions that that fly into the face of the ratings system. Um, but I will say personally, personally, I mean, for high school students, I mean, you know, watch the watch all nine Star Wars episodes and then watch the offshoots like Rogue One and Solo, um, because it, that's a phenomenal like that whole entire franchise of films is just really good so um and that'll give you you've got plenty of time to do that the movies are two and a half to three hours long there's like 11 of them right now um you've got time um you know check schoology check your email and then check out star wars 
Um, but per, then uh, aside from that, my, my personal favorite, I, I, I won't speak to what I would recommend high school students to watch, but I will say that my personal favorite is Black Klansman of that group that I shared for sure. All right, that is all the time we have for today. Once again, big shout out to Mr. Kern for joining us in our video today. Um, we'll see you next time.